Hello and welcome. This is Bob Lessick in the Center for Biotechnology Education at Johns Hopkins University. And our exercise today is on position-specific iterated blast or side blast and how to do a side blast search at NCBI on the web server. Our objectives for the exercise are to first set up the web server to run a side blast search. Change the threshold value. The threshold is a cutoff for what is considered homologous and actually goes into the next step of SciBlast. SciBlast is a stepwise process. We'll enter a protein sequence to run the first iteration of SciBlast, which is very much like a regular BLAST search. The second iteration is not like a, a typical BLAST search in that instead of a sequence for a query, we use a matrix, specifically a position-specific scoring matrix, which we commonly call a possum. And then finally, interpret the results. So we'll begin by going to the BLAST server. You can Google BLAST or NCBI, but I'll type in BLAST for BLAST, dot NCBI for National Center for Biotechnology Information, dot NLM for National Library of Medicine, dot NIH for National Institutes of Health, dot gov for the government site and that takes me to the blast menu and you might notice that there are five blast programs there's nucleotide blast protein blast blast x t blast n and t blast x are translated blast searches but we're looking at side blast and side blast is a protein blast program so i'm going to click protein blast and the first thing you may notice is that there's an empty window and that's where you enter the sequence the query sequence that you run the blast search on and I've chosen a transposase from the hyperthermophilic organism Pyrococcus furiosus. I'm going to copy that sequence. I'm going to include the top line, that descriptive line. It's part of the sequence, it's an identifier. Click copy and go over to the window on the blast page and paste that in. So now I have my query sequence. I want to choose my database. I'm going to choose the reference proteins, which is a curated database, so I won't get too many duplicate results. SciBlast is the program I want to choose. Blast P is the default protein blast. I'm going to flip that over to SciBlast. And I'm going to click the algorithm parameters. And here's where I'm going to change my threshold. So I'm going to have to scroll down. The threshold is currently set at 0.005. I want to set it at 0.0001, or 1 times 10 to the minus 4th. That's generally considered an acceptable cutoff for homology. Any, any blast result with an E value less than 1 times 10 to the minus 4th, you can consider that related to the query sequence. Now we'll click Blast. And here are my Blast results from the first iteration. And we see a lot of hits, and where it says E value better than threshold. So that's anything with an E value less than 1 times 10 to the minus 4. That's a homolog. So we see a lot of homologs to transposase in other organisms. Then we see the cutoff, and anything that's greater than 1 times 10 to the minus 4 has an E value doesn't make the cut. You see a lot of transposases there. You also see, I'm going to highlight, there's a tRNA uridine 5. That could be, if we had lowered our cutoff to 0.005, that might be a false positive. That might not be a transposase. That might not be related to the protein we started with. So the idea is to try to find putative homologs that you might have missed on the first round of blast searches. So what we typically do is, when we hit the go for the second iteration, Anything above that line where you see a checkbox next to it, there are no checkboxes below, all of those sequences are built into a position-specific scoring matrix or a possum. So they're mathematically representing that protein family. So now my second iteration, rather than using a query, is actually searching with a matrix or a mathematical representation of a protein family. We commonly call that a profile. It's a quantitative description. Okay, now you see everything in green is something that was found on the first iteration. And all of the sequences with the yellow new are sequences that now match the possum very well. So those are all putative homologs. If you notice, most of them have transposase in the description, so they're probably correct. And I find a bunch of new sequences. All of them with strong E values, but I want to caution you that the 
E value, for instance, here that I'll highlight, if 1 times 10 to the minus 21st, that looks like a really good E value. Typically, anything under 1 times 10 to the minus 4th, we automatically call that a homolog. However, remember that this second iteration was run using a possum. A possum is based on a multiple sequence alignment. There can be mistakes. So I would say anything that is new on the second iteration is a putative homolog, and you might want to do some further testing or some pairwise sequence alignment to determine whether or not those are actually related to the original query sequence. I could continue and run a third iteration, and all of the sequences, the new ones, the old ones, and the query sequence would go into a new possum, and I could probably find more homologs. And eventually, you usually stop getting new sequences at about the fourth or fifth iteration. So in conclusion, Cyblast is a powerful mechanism for finding distant relatives to protein sequences that may have been missed by a BLAST search. Now, BLAST doesn't find all homologs because BLAST is not 100% sensitive. However, Cyblast is a method for identifying potential homologs that were missed by the first BLAST search, and usually further investigation is needed to confirm that homology. Thank you for following, and good luck with Cyblast searching.